we'll start with the embroidery right now. Please, if you're choosing to do embroidery, watch the video that I posted with a professional showing you different embroidery stitches. Um, but I'm going to show you a basic stitch right now. So I have my shape drawn. So that's the, the main thing is draw out your design first. And then think about how you want your thread to interact. So for this shape, I wanted this kind of long going to the same from the seam. However, if I wanted to, I could also do tiny little stitches like that. But instead, I'm going to do from here all the way down. And back up to the top. I have a few of these embroidery hoops, but I don't have very many. So it's going to be a first come, first serve. Um, you don't need them, but they do make it a little easier to keep your, your fabric taut. So I'm just going from one line, so from my center line, down to the edge line. So as I'm going, my stitches are going to get thinner and thinner. Which you don't ever want to do with your embroidery. So you don't ever want to have like a huge long section of just plain old thread. You want to stitch it in there somewhere. Okay, I'm going to pretend like I went all the way back down. And now to give me that middle, I'm not going to go all the way down. Instead, I'm going to go every couple of strings. I did not tie my needle because I like the ability to let the needle move on the thread. Um, you are welcome to do it that way or you can tie the needle. It really doesn't matter. It's just personal preference. So for that one I went back a little bit. I'm just cleaning up the edge right now. And like I said, please watch the video that shows a bunch of different techniques, different stitches, because you can get some really cool effects. You can even embroider with ribbon, and I have large needles and ribbon that you can use if you would like. Okay, you guys get the basic gist of it. So, once you're all finished, you'll pop it off of the embroidery hoop, take your needle off, and tie it in the back, and you're all done with the embroidery. All right, if you're using fabric markers, um, just be aware that fabric markers bleed a little bit, so make your design bigger than what you think you want. And just like before, you should already have your design drawn on. I have, again, just a few kits of fabric markers, so use them and then bring them back when you're done. See what color do I want my lightning bolt to be? How about pink? I think it's easier to take your fabric and kind of spread it out between your fingers and pull. I would highly recommend that you put a piece of paper underneath just so that you can not have to clean up so much. And you can just color just like markers. I would not recommend that you color back and forth like this. I would find a direction that works and stick with it. Now your marker has to be heat set. So that means that you will have to pop it in the dryer on high for like 30 minutes or I have an iron that I can iron. Don't wash it until you heat set it. And that's pretty much it. Fabric marker is really straightforward. Um, if you get a color that doesn't work, let me know and I'll trade it out if I have any extras. And then you can just color your whole mask that way. Alright, now for Sharpie. If you want to get a kind of tie-dye effect, again, pull your fabric tight. You could do whatever kind of drawing pattern you want. Just kind of going for this little effect. 
and you can use whatever colors you want. If you have your own Sharpies, bring them. If you don't, I have a few neon colors that you can use. And again, just like before, put a piece of paper or something underneath so you don't make a huge old mess. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now that you have your Sharpie drawn on your fabric, you have a piece of fabric underneath, <laughs> let me know. And I have a spray bottle full of rubbing alcohol. I will be the one to spray. I'm just going to spray your whole piece. And then you can just watch as the dye will start to spread. Um, rubbing alcohol kind of dissolves the Sharpie. And so it'll start to spread until it'll all be tie-dye. So it'll be a little minute. Um, I would say maybe put it in your cubby and then come back to it the next day. Um, I'll post a picture of what this looks like um, at, at the end of this video. Puppy paint. So to do your puppy paint, I don't have class sets, I only have these, so you'll pick a color or two. And I'll go on over on this side. Now I don't want you to put the puppy paint on the part that you breathe out of because puffy paint is plastic and you can't breathe through plastic. But you can do it like on your cheek or um, above. So these are all new. So you'll just open them up and then just draw. Again, I drew it with a pencil first. You probably can't see it, but there's an E here. I'm going to take my puffy paint and drag it. You don't need a ton. And once it's down, you can move it around a little bit. When you're all done, make sure you put the cap back on. And then you can use a needle if you need to. And you can kind of, oh, I meant to get that all the way up there. You can kind of direct it to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. I'm just using one of the fabric pins. Just make sure if you do use one of the fabric pins or one of the needles that you clean it up. You don't want to have the goofy paint on the ends. All right, I hope this helps. Um, make sure you're going to pick one of these methods at least, but you can do a couple. Um, I'm thinking I might do Sharpie and then do a little embroidery on the sides, um, but it's really up to you. I might go with fabric markers too, I don't even know. So once you have your mask cover made, let me know and we will either dry it in the dryer or we will heat set it with an iron and then we'll move on from there.